our next guest has some surprising new information about where in the world women are making advancements in economic equality and the importance of that in terms of overall economic growth. University of California Berkeley professor Laura Tyson joins us here on the floor. Good morning. Welcome to In Business. Thank you very much. And now you are looking at uh, leveraging an asset that is invested heavily in and yes. not necessarily utilized the way it should be, and that is women. That's exactly right. So we work, uh, the World Economic Forum does an annual report. We look at gender gaps. We've discovered uh, that uh, gender gaps, for example, in education, I think of each of the women you mentioned, they were highly educated. Gender gaps in education around the world are closing. There's still significant economic gaps, and that's opportunity, promotion, advancement, and remuneration. And there's even more significant political gaps. Well, what's interesting in the United States is while we've moved up in the rankings, we're at this point of possible austerity. And women receive a large part as, as family makers uh, of social services. So are we at risk of losing the spot here in the United States of these gains? Well, the gains we have in the United States are really gains that come from economic advancement as measured by labor force participation, as measured by wage equality, as me measured by positions of women in technical, professional leadership positions. I don't think we're at risk. Uh, of, those, of losing those gains. I think the important thing here is to have women continue to be educated and to continue to be given real opportunities at the beginning of their career to advance all the way to the top, as we've just seen with the women at IBM. I do think we have to worry about the fact that there are policies that women draw significantly on, social security policies as an example, and all around the world, families, and particularly women, are at risk from austerity which cut back those social welfare programs. Uh, what was the most surprising thing about this year's analysis to you? Well, you know, there are no big surprises. I think, I guess one thing would be that the progress that we've seen around the world, 85% of the countries we follow still making progress in economics and in politics, even though we have a very uh, difficult set of economic circumstances. Not a surprise, but a second thing to observe is that around the world, the biggest gaps are political representation at the top level. Despite those gaps, the world is making real progress on closing the health gap for women, closing the education gap for women, and increasingly closing the economic gap for women. And I think what we're going to see from that is more and more women ending up in positions of leadership, as we see with Angela Merkel and as we see with Christine Lagarde. Uh, you are also on the President's uh, Job Commission here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a jobs week, important part of that economic yes. picture. Uh, yes. What are you expecting? Well, I, you know, I learned uh, absolutely as chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors never to second guess those numbers, the employment numbers. I think what, look, we know what the facts of the economy are. When the economy grows at two and a half percent, which is the most recent sort of estimate, uh, the economy is growing enough to generate jobs in the 100, 125, 150,000 range to keep the unemployment rate from rising. So maybe that's what happens. But on the other hand, the jobs numbers don't keep quarter by quarter sync with, right. the, with the output numbers. My general view is the, is the same it's been for a while. The economy is not growing on a sustained basis at a fast enough clip mm -hmm. to generate enough employment to bring the unemployment numbers down in any significant way. Well, we're all going to be watching that uh, on Friday. Laura Tyson, thank you for your time.